this is Flash Somebody at the Dork Table in RealLibertyMedia.com today. On this, what day is this? This is the 19th of January. Thank you, Grimner. Uh, 2019. Testing 123. Hope you guys can hear me. We'll, we'll find out immediately, I'm sure. Uh, we'll try saying hi to the group at RLM Chat. And it's the main headquarters of all the stuff that goes on on the radio around here. We're uh, working. We're like a like a machine. <laughs> anyway, we got Barman, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Brackets DC, Anti, Chelsea, Dooney, Chloe, Echelon, J. Dread, Meister Brow, Poxpot, Poxphone, Rain, RLM Fluke. Rob Works, Rome's Vinny, Phantom, Asmo 2, Beetle, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, D. Dork Z, a mental, uh, Frumpy, Frumpy 2, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, J's, Nines, J's, Kozu, Moy, and Nensen Dubois, Poxahome, Ponsas, Sock Puppet, and Skittle. And those are the bots and bodies that you can chitter chatter with on the reallibertymedia.com chat. Because that's what they do. They solve all the world's problems and they just keep on going. <laughs> it's just too much. Anyway, I've been having some hardware difficulties the last couple days. And uh first thing, my headphones died. And then the second thing is... I couldn't figure out how to use the stuff that I, that I had Thursday night. It was too late to get my wife to help me. So I called in a night. And then today the uh, power de- department decided to have a crash and took the Internet down for about two hours. <laughs> right right at 6 o'clock my time. So I'd have to postpone this performance and do it later. So let's see. Uh, did I say it? And let me ask. Am I on to the crowd out there? It gets about a 30-second delay, give or take. And uh, I haven't had anybody say they haven't. So, anyway, that's the bitching and sniveling um, I have on my mind today. Ah, thank you, Moose. And uh, Miss Moose gave me the thumbs up, so we finally have the situation corrected on the Windows computer, and now I'm working on progressing on to my Linux computer. Uh, I thought I might be able to do it the other day, but mm, I'm always slow. I was in a hurry once, but that was when I was born. (laughs) I got out two months early, (laughs) and I've been one lazy SOB ever since. Anyway, what is going on in the world? We have so many, um, I guess the word is acts of violence going on, and I feel I'm popping. Let me move this mic up. It's catching something. Something's bouncing against my, ah, there we go. It was the headphone wire bouncing against something. Okay, let me uh, start over again here. But we have a chitter-chatter going on in the main feed of the reallibertymedia.com chat. About the latest cop shooting, they shot a kid in the back, you know, because running away from the cops when they tell you to stop is punishable by death. Death. Get used to it, people. They took your constitution a long, long time ago. And, uh, wow, if we would have been told the truth when we were growing up, I wonder if we'd be as lame as we are collectively today. Because it's all in black and white. On top of being on the Internet, the information has been around. People have been trying to tell other people for a long time that the government is a fraud. Anything the government tells you is straight up, not even a percentage, it's straight up bullshit. But it's got a huge audience of supporters. I wonder what exactly makes a human being Mm. live... To punish the next guy for law, you know, things that the other guy may not have ever done. I mean, geez, we've seen him let him out of prison after 30 years on death row for murder. 
And then they do a DNA because they got this new DNA shit or somebody bribes somebody or whatever. And the guy didn't do it. So 30 years of his life, boom, you know, gone. Nobody cares. And we're so, uh, we're so used to being treated like shit that when other people are treated like shit, the only thing we can really collectively say is, damn, I'm glad that wasn't me. Now, I don't remember it starting out this way. I come from a different time, you know, older guy. Coming up on 6-0 if I live to September. And uh, I think I've seen a few changes in life over the years. It started out nice and peaceful and it turned into a total fucking bloodbath. And uh, the country I'm from thinks they're the, the police of the world and the Jews tell them to go do this and they do it. Here we are, 55,000 different versions of the same story. Everybody knows what happened. I think we're all lied to. I don't think anybody knows anything. I think what we know inside is probably the truth, and what we see outside is just crap. You know, it, it rubs your raw bone you know, when you're uh, trying to get along in life. And every day on the internet or the TV or society, you're inundated with all this negative shit and violence. And I've been going crazy with movies lately. I was looking for movies, some, something that wasn't based on murder, betrayal, or thieving. And there's not much, uh, unless you want to watch children's cartoons. And I'm sorry, but I don't want to be a homo when I grow up, so I'll pass on the children's cartoons. <laughs> it's just not... Uh, I mean, I got nothing against you homos out there if that's what you want to do. What I got a problem with is people shoving their personal taste in, in my face with a parade <laughs> on TV. You know, Well, I wouldn't watch it, but... That's the side of society that still collects. They still gather in large, large groups. And they they try to assimilate other people's information that doesn't belong to them. <laughs> and the next thing you know, they're, uh, they're diversified. And uh, they're open to new things and all this other bullshit. That's a load of crap. Th there's nothing natural about the crap we get fed through the media. To me. Maybe you guys think so, but I've yet to see anything. I mean, the cops shoot somebody in the back, and there's still people on reallibertymedia.com supporting the cop. <laughs> Shot in, in the back. Let's give him some time off for good behavior and maybe send him and his family on a nice little vacation to Hawaii. Because, you know, he suffered that trauma having to shoot that kid in the back for having a toy gun. And here's the best part about it. Nobody brings this side of it. This police officer, guy that has weapons to attack and defend with, doesn't know a toy gun from a real gun. <laughs> and is so terrified that it could be a real gun that he'll shoot you in the back if you don't follow his orders. Now... I don't remember anybody ever listening to that stop crap. When people say stop, the first human reaction is to get the hell out of where I'm at now. Why are you going to stop? Mm. Well, I guess the lesson that we learned recently is that if you don't stop, they'll shoot you from the back. They don't care anymore. And I'm laughing out of nervousness more than uh, it's not humorous. It's so uncomfortable. You know, I've gotten too old. You know, I used to think differently than I do now, I guess, when I was younger. And about fighting and violence and all that. And as you age... If you don't mellow by 30 and you're still a raging idiot after that, well, good luck to you. You know, it's usually other people's uh, violence and misery that gets the the person watching off in the first place. Hmm? 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 What do you think out there in real liberty media dot land dot, dot, <laughs> dot com land? You guys think that 
other people get off on watching other people's misery. Yeah, you could even put it on a, uh, what do you call it, a link. The live webcams go over pretty good, too, with a certain crowd. Mm. I've yet to be uh, interested enough in the problem to open up a link to watch it as a source of entertainment. But then again, I'm of the mindset that believes the government is, they're the ones that do all the drug trafficking. You can't smuggle anything into the United States. Are you stupid? I mean, the only thing that gets into the United States that uh, people don't want in the United States seems to be Americans. <laughs> they don't want us there no more. They want us to all go away. Go away. Oh, I am busy. Oh. Hmm. Let's see what's going on in the reallibertymedia.com chat. And we've got Java Doctor and Moose Girl and I think Dork, uh, what's his name today? Dork Cake Z. I think they're chatting it up a little bit. But I'm trying to get back into radio mode and think of something intelligent to say. And you know how I do on the dork table. Usually don't have much cooking that's of any relative uh, significance. I live a quiet, peaceful, sheltered life in a non-disclosed location in a faraway land where people, they're, they're nice. <laughs> there you go. Um, but I didn't come from that. I, I came from it, say, 40, 50 years ago. And the, the place that I left in 2011 is not the place that I started in. I can honestly say that. The changes and the changes since I've left... I only see them on, on the interwebs. No physical. I haven't been home. Don't think I'm going to return back to the land of laws to face off with the other side <laughs> in this lifetime. I don't have any enemies. I don't want any enemies. In fact, I think I had a meltdown on my partnership because I felt the enemy thing cooking in me. I was getting angry about stuff. and When, when I'm angry... It doesn't serve any purpose. It just, it just, uh, you get insulting and you start bantering back and forth and then everybody hates everybody at the end. And what I did was just my way of cutting out the middleman because if you're angry, there's nowhere for you to go. Anger is where I can't think, you know, and if that's where I'm uh, led or pushed or that's where I go to on my own, whatever the end is, there's no way to learn anything. You're just stuck in that frothing, stupid anger. And uh, I'm trying to avoid it. And I'm not doing a very good job. But, uh, you know, uh, with as little verbal expression as possible. You know, because we, we say and do things in life that we mean at the moment. Or we don't even mean them. We just say them and we think they're funny and whatnot. And uh, the person on the other end, maybe not so much. And I've always had a problem with giving a shit about what the other guy thinks because of my political, religious, and educational stand. I think the people that follow those three things, mm, please, there's no talking to them. All they want is revenge for crimes committed against their state that, in the reality of life, don't affect them, but because they're pounded every day about illegal immigrants take money, illegal immigrants murder. It takes your mind off the people that you live amongst that do the same fucking thing. You know, but they leave out the part that the American government in, initiated this whole thing. They, they brought people from where they are to America, and then they just tell the public a different story. And if you don't believe me, why don't you try to file a... a uh, SSI, what is that stuff they got? Social Security pays a disability thing. I've had a lot of friends over my lifetime explain this thing to me. Why don't you file for a disability claim and, and see just how loving the state is to you? And what they'll tell you in the end run is, well, the illegals do their paperwork properly, and we don't in America. Yeah, there you go. See, they're telling you right there in the, in that statement that they work with people that 
they shouldn't work with, and the people they should work with, they don't give two shits about us. So, why? Let us ponder this. Hmm. Could it be that everything we're told in society is either the exact opposite of what's represented or has nothing to do with what's represented? And my favorite lately has been this fluoridation in the water. Hmm. To me, water, uh, I, I read as a child, were 80% water. Now, those, that's when you're born. As you develop into adulthood, the water table in your body goes, the water amount goes down to between 55 and 65%, according to what I've read. But still, that's over half of your body mass is water. Well, then wouldn't that be the most important resource that you physically need to survive on? Makes sense to me. I haven't heard any opposition. So what the what the government allowed was for the legal people that write laws to make the uh, the laws so broad they could dump pollutants and shit into the water legally and not have to face any consequences. Then they had to bullshit the public with something so that they could, you know, this would be allowed and go by unnoticed. So what they did was they went on this big uh, campaign program thing promoting the shit out of fluoride, how good it is for you, what a wonderful blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, a couple, I guess a couple years ago, when I got into the Internet a little bit better, did a little reading, and decided to figure out just exactly what fluoride was. Okay. Now, this is what 20 and this is 2011 when I really started to sit down and open links and read stuff. Before that, I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't available for internet. I had other other things that occupied most of my time. And then when I was in Scotland, I had a lot of time to sit and think. And what I thought I'd do is take some advice and follow some ideas and the one i'm still stuck on is the fluoride and what the government did they used to manufacture it in in uh, florida that was the source of fluoride for the united states and they sublet they cut the florida supply and they subleased their supply to china and if you read uh, if you read what's in the floor the chinese fluoride this is hard to even talk about it's more disgusting and worse for us than what was already there in the first place. And maybe the good side, they may be lying about this too. They say 40% of the water supply is fluoridated. Hmm. Well, maybe that's today. Maybe that's just another story. I don't trust the Fed. They, they never tell the truth. I mean, crying out loud, your FBI, up to their eyeballs. Eyeballs, I tell you. In trickery and deceit, dueling it out with old President Faggy Hands. And, uh, well, now there's a shutdown or something. I don't know. They're still arresting people. So what's this government shutdown crap got to do? And they're still paying everybody. TSA was getting fed <laughs> restaurants and supporters, you know, because they do such a good job keeping the terrorists off the airplanes. There has not been one terrorist caught through TSA. Wonder why. Could it be because there aren't any? <laughs> no, people are stupid by nature, right? They're going to spend 18 years of their life every time they travel facing these uniforms and these x-ray machines and these body cavity searches, but they're going to just be the one guy that's going to get through it undetected. 18 years, right? Mm, I wonder. I haven't heard anything positive come from the, uh, what is it, the bomber crowd lately. The only bombings I ever read about are crap that the government pulls. And then they blame it. You know, see, you'd have to have a, a very negative light on the military to even imagine what I believe the truth is about what happens in foreign lands and why they do it. Because I followed the Libya thing pretty close when that was happening. And I thought Libya was an okay place if you're an Arab, if you wanted to live there, because I'm Jewish. But the one thing Gaddafi was hell-bent on is Israel, Israel was his sworn enemy. And that that was the 
the beginning of his downfall. And when he went to selling oil for gold, that, that killed him. They decided to take him out. But when you're, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> when you're, <coughs> wow, <coughs> yeah, <coughs> Ooh, I got help. <coughs> when you're a sworn enemy of the chosen people, well, your popularity in the Western world is compromised and manipulated by religious zealots that are so misguided and lied to that we'll never recover from the damage done from the Jews. But on the good side, I was reading this today, earlier today, before the great crash of Denmark in 2019 when they took my internet away, that there is a perspective point, this point of view about Israel is running out of time. Because, well, they're surrounded, their population is not very big. They got like 7 million. And they're surrounded by, what, 100 million Arabs? And that makes me cough, sweetheart. Anyway, I can't, can't handle the marijuana cigarette while I'm doing the radio tonight. It made me choke. So I have to go back to my marijuana pipe. Anyway, so the, the, the report is is there's so many Arabs that are pissed off at Israel, and Israel is going to eventually fall into itself. And by the numbers, I mean you can't bully you can't bully people for a whole lifetime. You know, I mean you can get away with it for a while. I've done it. Jesus Christ, there's people I don't like. I bully them back, but eventually it, it either does one of two things. It works and your problem stops or it continues and you get out of the fucking fight altogether. Well, Israel's been placated to for so long and the people are so split because they got an Arab population that's going to outgrow the Jew population in time. So we've got more of this shit to look forward to, but, uh, I don't know, maybe there's a big collapse coming, and they've run out of stories to tell us about, you know, uh, the banks are too big to fail, so we're going to give them $70 trillion. <laughs> the population's going to love hearing that next time. Hmm. Didn't GM get bailed out, and then, didn't they fail in the, like, last year or two? I'm not even sure. I haven't, I haven't bought a car since, uh, geez, I've can't remember the last time I've been driving other people's cars and then uh stopped driving and when I got here when I when I got to Scotland and uh I, the car lost appeal you know the small community just straightened all that shit out for me so as a result of circumstances and I go in with the flow I stopped driving you know don't even want to haven't been in a car and uh, I think it's the first year I was here, I went somewhere with my neighbor because we were doing a job together, and he had to pull the trailer on his car, and I was going to help him. Can't leave the guy with all the dirty shit to do by himself. So against my, you know, my inner feelings, I did what I had to do. And fortunately, since then, I haven't been uh, in need of a vehicle to fulfill an obligation since, and the people that uh, I'm married into, the family I'm in, they're pretty lax about my hippie stand and my laziness. And, you know, because the things that I do do outweigh the things that I don't do. And it's my personal belief, constant bragging about all the wonderful things that you do and all the wonderful things that you own is a bunch of crap. What I get my kicks off of is my little excursions into town, you know, seeing these, uh, the kids at the grocery store breaking in a job and, you know, learning how to behave in a, uh, in a situation like that for the first time. And some of them are nervous and, and are uh, intimidated by the English and some of them are bold. You know, it's just like real life. You've got people that are afraid and you've got people that are not afraid. And luckily for me, I've learned in life to leave the feared ones alone. If they're afraid, just avoid them. There's plenty of other people in the world. Leave the scared ones alone. 
<clears throat> the cops will shoot him in the back someday. You're you're doing him a favor. Maybe not the cops here, but I was reading all that stuff in the chat earlier, and wow, how disappointing. Look what we've become. I mean, when, as a collective world, this crap that we call life, the the things that are encouraged, the things that, that the system wants us to do are the very things that are the, the ruination of, of us. And we've even been compared to animals legally. So when you go to court, the Admiralty Court, they see you as an ignorant animal that's there to be punished. And that's it. It's a finance game. It's a commerce game. It's got nothing to do with law, nothing to do with right and wrong. If that judge wakes up in a good mood, I've told a story. I had a judge wake up in a good mood, and for whatever reason, he said, okay, case dismissed. Luck was with me, because if the guy had been woke up in the middle of the night by a barking dog and come to work early that morning pissed off, I might have gone to jail. But didn't. He gave me the opportunity to reverse my plea and uh, straighten the whole thing out. But other people, who knows? You know, you wake up in the morning and you're mad and you go to work. What do you do? I know that I've been guilty of that, taking my shitty mood out on other people. I still do. I'm not perfect, but I'm working on it. I'm getting there, man. Let's see. I'm going to just straight out read some of the RL. I see Moose up here. She's posting Farm and Fleet six year old automotive batteries. Hmm. Blames Farm and Fleet six year gold automa- automotive battery. Someone told me to go to Farm and Fleet. Well, if that's the good advice, then take it. I guess you can pretty much uh, get some opinions from the the uh, uh, car people, let's call them that, mechanic-minded on the RLM. There's plenty of guys that have plenty of input for people that aren't familiar with what to do with a certain product on a car. And we got a lot of car enthusiasts. So I think going on the main chat with a, a simple question, you know, something that's simple to me, could be very complicated to you. I think that a lot of that, because I'm not so sure I would have the uh, have the forwardness, you know, to to seek outside information. I usually just open links or, yeah, I've been computerized by now, and I've been able to find anything I want to know on the internet. And of course, chatting with other people is also finding out on the internet. I'm just not that uh, I'm not that flamboyant. Yeah, you know, I make some jokes and I type a lot of crazy crap that amuses me, but mm, I'm not real talkative about the day-to-day, the small talk. I don't small talk where they fly and shit. And I know it's annoying, but I've just been this way my whole life, so it it's never going to change, you know. We all have our little demons to fight. <laughs> Eh, one man's demon is another man's, uh, what would you call it? Hmm, friend. Because <laughs> I've been smoking the devil's lettuce since I was just a child of about, I think, 13 or so. I give it a shot. Because mm. the dork table, this is a good dork story. <clears throat> when I was a young child, all of it, like eight, seven, eight years old, uh, I would, didn't like smoking, didn't like cigarettes, wouldn't wear the same clothes two days in a row. Uh, just a complete, want it this way, it's got to be exactly like this kind of kid. And it was very annoying, and people tolerated it, but they didn't like it. <laughs> my mom would tell me in my older years about what a pain in the ass it was, but what was the alternative, you know? You're either a neat or you're not. And the alternative to that would have pissed my father off. So they, they just looked at it like the lesser of two evils. At least he's not a mess. Then they had my little brother who didn't care about none of that stuff. <laughs> and some of those habits that I had as a child carry over today. And some of them, I I have the uh, adulthoodness about me now to put them down. And not be uh, obsessed about 
trivial little things. Now, some trivial little things still get up my nose and stay there for a week or two or a month. But usually after about a month, I'm, I'm over whatever, whatever the hump is that gets me and brings me down. I can get out of it alone. You know, if I'm left alone, I'm better off. And people try to help. Oh, do they try to help? And then they try to talk. Well, I have mentioned this on the dork table for a lot of, lot of, lots of times. I believe communicating is what causes all this mess. So therefore, if the communication caused it, communicating cannot fix it. It's beyond communicating to repair a mistake that you make with people. Something's got to change, and eh, it doesn't. People are what they are, and we take each other the way we individually take each other, and sometimes we even agree about shit, but not usually. Because like I said in the first place, you can have a chat room full of people that have an opinion, different opinions, about a kid being shot in the back by the police. And to me, there is no excuse. Well, he was doing that. Well, what did he do, not what could he have done? Because we've moved into this timeline or this period in time or whatever. I, I can't really identify it better than that, where violence is the only recourse. Nothing else works better than shooting them dead. And I think it's a society's kind of game to get you guys um, numb. You know, the number you are to pain, the less it bothers you. You know, so I think the radio lesson I learned was I'm a lot more sensitive deep down inside than I was ever willing to give any credit to. And uh, that's my thing to deal with, not anybody else's. I'm not even mad at anyone. I'm just not willing to do what what makes me feel uncomfortable anymore at my age. I'm going to blame it on that. I think that if if a grown man at this point in his life is still doing things he doesn't want to do to please somebody else, then he's being a doormat. And I got to that point where I felt uncomfortable because I didn't want to do this. So we changed gears abruptly, and it was taken badly, and we're going to go on into the future. Now, I'm sure there's a lesson in this for me somewhere, but I I don't know, maybe 50 lessons. The first one was, wow, what? I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. So my lack of communicating with others skill, you know, because if you can't read my mind, you're not very smart. <laughs> Anybody else out there like that? You know, well, you should know. It's not doesn't take rocket science to figure this one out, but some people see things differently, you know. One guy likes his eggs hard-boiled. The other guy likes his eggs um, scrambled. Hmm. Still an egg in it. They still kind of taste the same, too. I mean, but for some reason, human beings have uh, different ways to get to us. And we have things that piss us off, and we got things that warm us up. And they're very private. I don't I don't think people talk about the things that make them happy or make them sad openly very often. I've never done it. I mean, I've done a little bit of it over the years on the radio because this is the invisible audience. You guys can't see me. You just hear my wacky voice and hear my wacky side of something or my output, my input, and then you got your own, you know. And what I try to do is to give the other person the freedom to believe whatever they like, but I will not ever give them the freedom to do what they please. And, you know, if it bothers me, I can't tell them not to. I can only tell them I'm not going to. And I've never found a, a, a middle ground for that one. So life has been um, full of a lot of disappointments because I wouldn't listen to reason. You know, oh, look what you're going to lose. Oh, crying out loud. I've I've had just as much taken away as I've walked away from in a lifetime. So to me, the game isn't about mental things, and it's not about physical things. It's It's almost indescribable. What I desire in life is not what people are accustomed to um, giving. 
And it's a lot deeper than that. And I think so few people um, are capable of understanding the other guy anyway. I can't do it. I don't understand you any better than you understand me. So I got to think, man, maybe I don't understand me either. <laughs> Because every time I make up my mind about something, five things come in to change my mind. And my stand has usually been, well, whatever my instinct was, I'm going with that in the first place. Every time I give in to somebody else trying to um, do the right thing, with me in mind even, but I didn't want to do it, please don't make me do this. Although good things come from the original, I don't want to do it. If you play long enough, you find something. But, you know, I don't always like to wait. You know, it took me years to meet Circle. <laughs> 54 years. And, wow, now I'm 59, so I don't have a lot of time left to waste doing things that I don't want to do. And I don't know a nice way to tell anybody that without hurting their feelings. So... Their feelings are going to get hurt one way or the other. Mine get hurt one way or the other. The best thing to do is stop and drop it until both parties can be sensible at the same time. And when I feel combative verbally, there's no stopping me. I just will not listen. <coughs> cough, cough. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. And so I'm not so much picking on anybody else but me. You know, I'm not blaming or accusing or, you know, floating around the sides. Look at that. Look at that, and do something different. It's just really hard to look at yourself. God damn, I've been trying to do that all my life. And whatever, what, whatever it is about me, other people see. How the hell could I see it? I'm doing it. I'm looking out. So I've got no fucking idea what it is you see. I only see you, <laughs> unless they get me a mirror. And then all of a sudden, the rules change. You know, and you look into your own eyes, and there's that just that brief moment. It's not very, it doesn't last long for me. It's just a brief moment. Something inexplicable happens, and then it goes away. Can't hold it. You know, the inner me, it's probably buried in there somewhere, you know, but it's had a very little experience on the outside. So, um, I prefer my own company. I got mad because of it this morning. I was so upset, and I didn't understand what I was upset about, but I was just pissed off. And and it's that I really like my own company so much that it really takes a lot to push me to notice you. <laughs> and and it's not a matter of anybody pushing anything. It's the way I see the world, right? I see other people have to do things to grab my attention. Because I don't give it. Well, I wonder if that's a unique um, mental experience or if we all go through it. Maybe we just do it differently, just like everything else. You know, If you smoke, I mean, how many times have you gone to a party and seen 50 different kinds of cigarette packs all over the freaking place? But everybody's smoking, but they're not smoking the same kind. So what's that all about? <laughs> Freedom of choice, of course, you idiot. Which brings me to back to the water thing. You know, they poison the water. Guess what? Everything. If you poison the freaking water and it's not even enough, they got to make GMOs. <laughs> and and an unex, you know, this is an experiment in food, in science, in levels of molecular this and that I couldn't even define, right? And yet the the science people are so sure of their self that they're just doing it. They don't even care. They're not even labeling shit to let you know. They're just going to surprise. You got to eat. You might as well eat this. Hmm. And I learned about that in Scotland. And the way I learned about it in Scotland was I was on the Internet one day, and I read uh, labeling GMO foods. So I start looking, and then it's got the countries that have banned these items off their food schedule. And I happen to be living in one. And it dawns on me, right? If it had to be banned, that means it had to be used. <laughs> so just like everything else, you break the law first 
And it doesn't matter what the law that you break is, because nothing can stop you from breaking a law, except you. And <laughs> some of these laws are so insane that how could you how could you ever not break them? I read that all us Americans on any given day could be charged with three felonies. Not misdemeanors, not a night in the county jail, no, 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 felonies. Look at the minimum fines and the minimum time sentences for paper felonies, right? Now, all the congressmen and all the Senate and all the political leaders in every level of city, county, state, government, all the way up to the Fed, Every fucking where you go, you got thieves. You can say you don't, but you do. And the way I know it is they're stealing everything that's not bolted down. They're running out of shit to steal. So they're going to give up on Africa. I think they looted the fuck out of that place. I don't, there might not be anything left. And they'll go, well, oil. Okay, well, according to the Russians, oil is a renewable, and we got screwed with that fossil fuel story. <laughs> It was beautiful, though, wasn't it? The dinosaurs, they died and they didn't decay. No, no, they, they were made out of special uh, properties and they turned into oil. <laughs> the shit that we were taught. Hmm. Now they've got, they, see, they got us so dumbed down. Now they got people convinced CO2 is bad for them. Okay, well... The way I learned it in school, if they were lying to me then, was CO2 fuels the plants, the plants fuel us, no plants, no us. Do the math. I just did. It took me like 10 seconds. So, like uh, Grimm did a thing on his show Monday night about, now they're going to make, well, not going to, now they have a, a mental disorder to attach to climate change deniers. So if you don't play their game, you get punished. Now, what are they going to do? Fine us, uh, put us in jail. I mean, over what? You can't think anything anymore. I mean, this is a big fucking world, you know. And with the with the technology that the these people like Westinghouse and Edison destroyed to create the second rate shit and sell it to us, you'd think by now. People would have got wise, but you know what? They didn't. They're still looking for answers. They're not demanding that the answers be given to us. Put it on the Internet. Let us look at it, all of us, not just the eggheads that understand the technical shit. Make it in simple speak for morons like me, crying out loud. I don't know an amp from a ohm. You know, when it comes down to that finite explaining electricity, I just know that something about life feels as though we're not given everything we're promised. And we're promised the freaking moon from when we're little children till we're grown ups. And then when you're a grown up, they go, ah, we were kidding. You don't get nothing. You can watch and you can look. Hey, look at the queen. Hey, look at Donald Trump. Hey, look at this idiot. Hey, look at that idiot. Hmm. So you get to chase celebrity and, you know, look at castles and look at how rich people eat off gold plates your whole life, thinking that someday, if you were a billionaire, it could be you. Well, I did a little thinking on all that money thing years and years ago, and it dawned on me that, you know what? You can't do it. You can't do it because if you can't get a bank to finance you, you can't do it. There you go. Poor people have no means. And they tell you, it takes money to make money. What kind of scam is that? I grew up with, hey, if you work hard and you do this and you do that, life will reward you. And then you grow up and you find out, no, it won't. It's all been a big performance by a bunch of liars. All of it. School, religion, politics, nothing but a big show. And time after time, they prove it with information. Pearl Harbor was an inside job to get the United States to go along with World War II. The Lusitania was an inside job to get the United States to go along in World War I. Uh, the War of 1812, that 
burned Washington, D.C. to the ground, that burned every freaking book and library there was. But you know what? John Adams managed to save a set of books and the Constitution. And for some reason, I don't believe it. Because in school, they didn't spend a lot of time when I was growing up pointing you in that particular war out. They skipped it. It was never brought up to me. I had to find it later in life through the Internet. Here I am. Sorry about that. I was I, I got my mic on my right side, so I'm used to it on the left side, and now I'm right-handed. So guess what? Leaning into my lighter just again went, because I know Moose doesn't like it when I make obscure sounds on the radio. Mm. Like that one. Eh, got a discount of thirty two fifty. Wow. I remember when the battery cost twelve fifty. <laughs> now it's a hundred and thirteen forty to buy a car battery. A car battery, people. I mean wow. How did we get here? This is the question I've had since I was a teenager. You know, all the prices keep going up, but why why isn't the price right rates relative to personal income, Dad? Huh? What the hell does that mean? <laughs> because my poor dad wasn't a well-read, literate, booky kind of guy. I had to go to my mom. <laughs> so I had, you know, I had a father that was a little slow in the reading, and it pissed him off because he taught me how to do it really young, and boy, I took right off. I could read and write before I went to school. And my poor mom, when when they, whoa, you taught him to read and write? You've ruined it for us. Now what are we going to do? Of course, she didn't mention that until, geez, a few years ago I, I, we were on the phone. We had a lot, a lot, of, um, a lot of time to chitter-chatter on the telephone once I married Cirque and got settled. And uh, for years, spoke to my mom once a month, twice a month. And the little stories about my childhood that she kind of never mentioned, she would, she took the uh, opportunity to give them to me as an adult. So better late than never. I'll go along with that, but there were some things I would have liked to have known a lot sooner, <laughs> like the thing about school, because they made such a villain out of me at school, because I would never comply. Oh, he won't listen. Oh, he's always too fast. Oh, he won't sit still. Oh, this, that, and the other. Okay, now here I am, 59, and you know what I do really good now? I sit still. <laughs> Huh, honey, can I sit? I can sit still with the. I could bet I sit still as good as Donald Trump. Maybe better, because I'd seen a link the other day of all the things that Donald Trump does great and he's the best at. You know what, what wasn't on that damn list was sitting still. But the guy sure has, knows how to put on a show for the people, like this Pelosi thing. She's supposed to be going over to Afghanistan and some crap, you know, do her little um, see the troops bullshit. You know, wine and dine and see the troops for 10 minutes in seven days. And Trump's a pissy little bitch and he canceled her flight. But she's worth $200 million. She just booked another one. <laughs> it didn't stop anything. Political theater for the idiots that really think this stuff matters. That they really believe Pelosi and Trump aren't the best of buddies. They sit down and laugh at us together. Look at what we did this time. This has got to be the funniest thing ever. And if you if you think anything different, you, you buy into the politics. And that's what they're for. Why else would you have grown-ups in the public eye acting like little assholes? And supported. You know, this is... This is common behavior now from the people that hold power. They're mocked, they're laughed at, they're ridiculed, they're treated like jokes. But then on the other hand, they still got support from like 35% of the voting population. So the divide just works. It, it's never going to go away. It's built into the game. Now, I don't know why I think that besides it's obvious to me. I've met other people online over the years. It was obvious to them. But the folks that support it gave me a, a lot of, um, I don't know, I didn't understand it. And Cirque cleared it up for me the other day. And I know she said this before, 
probably a hundred times over the five years, right? But he never listened. She says that uh, certain things give people hope. Hmm. I went hope for what? <laughs> In my mind, I didn't. I didn't want to challenge her and start a you know start a debate about it. But in my mind's eye, it was like, hope for what? What's wrong with everything that they need hope? I don't get it. Even when I was in America, I, I, as badly as I thought of the system, I never felt victimized. I just thought that uh, the more attention you draw to yourself in certain lights, the more attention the police are going to pay to you. So stop doing it. And I did. I just said, I'm, I'm done with these police back in, uh, what was it, 1998 or something. Got jacked at a, walking home from a grocery store. Hey, we want to see your ID. Da, 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 da. And I went, oh, this is fucking ridiculous. Well, you know, it's a busy main street of a town that has, I don't know, population of maybe 50, 80,000, huge. And I'm walking home from the grocery store, but they still found it necessary to harass me because I looked like I might have drugs. Looked. Not that I had any. Not that I was known to be dealing anything anywhere. I just happened to be walking down the wrong street at the wrong time, and they wanted to make sure I wasn't a threat to society. Now, my opinion is the cops are the threat to society. I remember a day when they would never think of doing something like that. Would have never crossed their mind. They needed a valid reason. They had people to answer to. Hey, what'd you pull them over for? Because I felt like it. Oh, come here, Jones. We got to talk. You can't do that. Now, 40 years go by, and now they can shoot you in the back. And some people in society will still, after all that has been exposed over these last 50 years, and all the changes that the system has put the police through and still support the cops. Oh, man. Yeah, I read things on the Internet about the yellow vests. And sure, there's people that are going to be violent because people are pushed into it by society. It's, a, it's normal. It's cheap. So that violence, that punching and hitting and all that shit kind of violence brought arm and arm the state. Give them automatic weapons to fight a bunch of hooligans that are fist fighting. Because nobody in France was accused of having a weapon to be drawn on. They were just accused of being violent. So their answer is, their, their great leader, shoot them. Just like uh, the rumors, I don't know, all about when uh, that fake invasion was coming to the States from the South. <laughs> Had me going. I thought, motherfucker, because... The stories you were hearing about the solutions were more discouraging than the act itself of breaking into the American soil and taking your welfare money. Because if you think that's a life to live that's coveted, boy, you got some thinking to do. I'm telling you, I wouldn't want to live in a house with 15 other people and work for minimum wage so that I could send 90% of it home and eat. That would be uh, beneath my dignity in so many ways. But some people aren't raised to think of their self, so to speak, as an individual. They're part of a group. Group think, group life, group this, my tribe, my gang, my... Man, I've spent a lifetime trying to avoid it. And I've done pretty good, except for the circumcision and the nose thing. I got it down. <clears throat> but I have a feeling that I was born in the long run, ouch, on the losing side of the game. But it won't end, it might not even end in my, my lifetime, but eventually the numbers are just going to push, um, the Arab population is going to push the Jews right out of the land they stole in the long run. <laughs> numbers don't lie. Every fucking thing else in life will deceive you, but not numbers. Guarantee. If you, yeah, if you're a dork like me, okay. If you're not a dork like me, you probably think I just said the most ignorant thing I've ever said. But no, I can baffle you with with words, 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 stories, stories, stories. But numbers, they truly don't lie because, it, it, like in the banking, they're dealing five trillion dollars a day. Take off the zeros. <laughs> what do you got? Nothing.
No. I understood to a degree that zero is not really a number. It's like an identifier of nothing. So I like it when Mary says, you know, when you put a zero behind a five, what have you really got? You got 50. No, you don't. You got a five and a O. Oh. But we're taught and we're raised with the, these perceptions because if you look at it with that, you add a zero thing to the back of it, and that's what you're after, that it takes you down that road to to be a greedy, selfish, parasitic slob and not really understand that that's what you are because you're just supporting the the good for everybody. You know, what would we do without government? Hmm. Let us think. What, what would you do without government? I think we would stop killing each other almost immediately without government. Government. Uh, now, Jerry on BitChute, this guy is incredible. He calls it, the, he says that we wouldn't even be in war if it wasn't for the Masons. And he does his research. He's so thorough about what he does. Uh, I was talking with Rob about him this morning. I think it was this morning on uh, realliberty.com. Hmm. No, Real Liberty Media. We were on the um, Real Liberty Media chat, not the other site. And, and I posted a link. And I don't think that Rob was familiar. He opened it and he took a look at Jerry. And Jerry has not got an attractive intelligence appearance to him. When I saw him, he looked like your average Joe, simple guy. Then he starts talking. And then he kind of sounds like, like kind of Rain Man. Kind of like me, stutters and stammers through ideas. But he's very concise and c complete about his thoughts. I scattered. This guy, he's anal. He gets on a rant, and he's got to finish that particular rant from the one side to the other. Not, this is it, and, that, and this is that. He goes through all the details he knows in the middle to explain what he's trying to, to tell us. Uh, he's discovered a lot of things, interesting, you know, interesting things. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm scattered tonight. Sorry about that one. But I don't agree with a lot of people that I see on the Internet. I think a lot of them are on here to sell products. I've seen one guy's links, and the first two minutes of it was a, a flashlight ad. You know, oh, buy this flashlight, and you'll be so happy. And then I got to the link, and the link was great. But the premise was, I need to survive, send me money, buy my stuff, da-da-da-da-da. Now, hmm, uh, that, I don't believe so. I'm not dinging, nobody's called me, or uh, I haven't got any uh, things coming up, anti. So, no, I, that wasn't me. I would hear the ding in my little bitty headphones. Must have been you. I don't think so. Well, Cirque's not listening to the radio. She's just sitting in the room so I couldn't ask her I don't know let's get a ruling from the crowd was my uh, headphone or was my stuff dinging again like it like it was last time I thought I turned off the watch comms on our real liberty dot org because I like to know when when something comes up on that and it dings on the radio mm. but I didn't hear it and I was on a rant about something else and now we gotta change gears because anti got my attention Ask me a question, and I actually didn't have an answer for. Isn't that the way? When you want to know something, I don't know. <laughs> and then when you don't want to know something, I got 50 ways to explain it to you. But anyway, I was on about Jerry over at BitChute. And he's like a, a very, very intelligent guy, but he has a, a slow stuttery way of describing things and he interjects his, his own personal thoughts into stuff so he's kind of a uh, entertaining you know it's fun to listen to him plus i learn stuff but that's me a lot yeah, and i'm an acquired taste a lot of people don't like the way i say shit but what i'm getting to the point with here in the long run is uh, it's very difficult for me to get beyond the messenger and just get right to the message. <clears throat> uh, even Miss Kate heard it. Well, I guess, but I've got nothing going on. Here, let me close the RLO. And, uh, yeah, I did. I got, okay. It didn't show me the red bar, but I did have, uh, that was me. 
<laughs> okay, I closed reallibertymedia.org so that we won't have any more of that dinging going on because uh, it usually gives me a red bar over my button on the thing when I have a message come in, and it didn't this time, but when I opened it, there was a message. So, hmm. glitches in the Windows program. And my 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 goal for the next, oh, I don't know, I'm working on it. I want to use my Linux to broadcast my programming, whatever shows I do. And I'm stuck with Windows. I can't seem to get my shit together and get on the other computer, so I keep making the, the Windows one work. And it's got so many pissy little uh, technical things. Oh, you got to turn this off, and you got to turn that off, and you got to face Mecca, and you got to disavow any association with terrorism, and all kinds of crap. <clears throat> Anybody left still believes there's terrorists? I mean, not how I mean terrorists is there is nobody attacking America in America. If they're attacking America, they're doing it in their own home where America shouldn't be. And if you're supporting America fighting terrorism in foreign countries that's basically against their occupation, well, then you might have a mental disorder. I don't know. I can't swear to this because I don't really believe in all that psychology and mental disorder shit in the first place. But everybody else does. And every time I'm... I use my own thinking to explain what I see. I lose another friend or I, you know, or I dump them because fighting is just stupid. There is nowhere to go with fighting. It just ends. It doesn't end. It continues and it, it gets personal and people do this and say that. Now, you know what? I want to go with the premise of what would be good for all of us. That's what I'd like to do. But it, it's not a very popular thought. And people don't, I don't think they understand how that's meant because of their indoctrination. You know, what's good for everybody? What, financially? Because that would probably be the first thing I would have thought of, say, 30 years ago. <laughs> Excuse me. But now I'm a old relic, you know, and survived all the beatings of life every beating life had to give me i came out of it i'm on i'm not unscarred emotionally but i'm unscarred physically mm. and that in itself is something that's that's a positive but your insights uh, i don't know i don't know how to explain what goes on way back in the corners of my mind it goes on i don't think about it i react to it um, because you got people that they act, and they got people that react. And I thought I was more one with that would act. I didn't think of myself until the other day completely as I react, because I didn't give a shit. Now I care, and um, want to do is not make the same stupid mistake over again. And the way I cope with that is I take a long look at something. Sometimes it'll take me a month. And I'm consumed with this fucking idea like some kind of idiot savant. And I can't let it go. And when I do let it go, that's when I know that the water's all right to get back into. But when I'm angry and pissed off and shit, it's got very little to do with what I think at the moment it happens, you know. And uh, being slow like I am at this point, I think it just takes me a little time to to be objective because I'm a subjective thinker I go with the way I feel I don't really care what other people say I don't care what your proof is or your information or your opinion I care about how I think <laughs> isn't that isn't that a surprise hmm what well I just assume see then I assume just like everybody else that if I can see it you can see it but no, that's not how life really works. But we all seem to get trapped into that mindset of, well, it's obvious to me. I don't want to talk about it. You can see it. It's right there in front of you. Well, yeah, but it's your version of what happened, and it's never the same. 
And we're in this world where people want to, they want to force us to get along. You know, and we're not all meant to get along. Some people are combative. I am a combative person by nature. Uh, I like to drop that. I've been trying to for many years, but it's an edge. Uh, I guess it's in my personality traits. But what I have had a lot of success doing is avoiding, you know. Uh, fights end up in people getting hurt. Physical fights, verbal fights, all that kind of shit. The real ones. I don't mean the, the bullshit bantering that we do on the reallibertymedia.com chat. I mean the personal stuff that people say and do to each other. You know, I, um, I'd like to live in a in a world where I didn't... What's the right way to put it? I didn't feel everything so sharply as I do. But I do. It's probably... Uh, the benefits of pot is to not be so quick to judge and quick to react. Because it even took me a little time on, you know, I I did the radio thing without getting pissed off. But afterwards, boy, then I was pissed. And what that tells me is I'm just as fucked up as everybody else. No better, no worse. But... If I want to fix a problem, uh, first I got to find out what the problem is. You know, you can't take a, a car to a plumber and have him fix your car with plumber's tools. It's not going to happen. Even if he's a mechanic, you know, pipe wrench. How are you going to take your damn uh, spark plugs out with a pipe wrench? <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Well, we're going to do a little creative maintenance here. Crack bang. You know, no, 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 no. Things have to be dealt with in certain ways. Everything does, verbally, physically, and we're surrounded by all this negative sh ah, I got a lick sore from the wife. Thanks, baby. Um, we're surrounded by, I don't know, it's not even a balance anymore of good and bad. Whatever your attention span takes you to is what you're going to see. Here, I, I seen a movie yesterday. And in this movie, this guy makes this comment to this other guy. It's some kind of a killer diller, blah, blah, blah kind of film. And out of nowhere, the guy says, well, let me see where I write it down on. I know I wrote it down. Here it is. It says, if you see the dark, you chose the dark. See? And I'm not unaware of the answers. I'm, un um, I'm un unable to to do things I'm told to do. If I don't want to do something, that eh, no, it ain't happening. And uh, that's that non-compliance. You know, you take things in life, sometimes we take things too far. And I'm one of those extreme fucking people. And if I don't want to do it, no. I have to want to do something to do it. And you wanting me to do it ain't going to convince me to do it. I have to want to. So, then that shows me, whoa, something happened in me. Not you. You're still the same. So as I develop and I progress or digress, whatever the fuck is happening to me, my, my mind changes. But I'm not your average person and I don't communicate well and I just decide I'm going to do this. Like Cirque. <laughs> uh I don't know, just something I wanted to, I had to do it. Once I, once I got uh, talking to her and all that on the internet, hey, then the next step was, hey, nose to nose. So it took me a little time, but I figured it out. Well, I'm do, I do the same thing with everything, uh, right down to what I drink and eat, I think. Mm. Like the, uh, what's it been the last couple months? I was really enjoying going to the bar and having a few beers out on the patio. They got the swell patio. They got a street with big tables you could sit at. Watch the people go, you know, walking by and, and having life and doing things with their kids and tourists and just shit going on, just life. And the sun was out and it was comfortable and then the winter came. And I went, mm, it's cold. I don't want to, you know, walk in the cold to a bar and then go inside and drink cold beer. Nah, I'm going to pass and wait until summer comes back around. Now, 
I've met people in my life that would go to a bar that, as long as it's open to drink, didn't matter. That that's where they wanted to go. Me, not so much. I can take them, leave them. Uh, I try to be that way with everything in life. You know, if you can't live without it, maybe you're thinking uh, you're thinking kind of like possessively, you know, when you want to have something so bad that you're willing to, to look the other way at the, the your own moral fiber to keep it, <laughs> then, you know, that's just as dangerous as violence, you know, mental uh, manipulation. Because the power of words, I think, I'm starting to accept, because I always thought in the past that... Yeah, they're words, and yeah, I said it, but nah, I was fucking around, and I didn't mean it. But I didn't hear the tone that I said it in, but the person listening did. And I think your tone, not so much the words that you use to when you communicate with me, I'm not concerned about what you say so much as I'm concerned about how you say it. Oh, no, poor Moose. The dog took off. I bet he'll be back. He'll probably be scared and um I guess how far could he get? It's snowing there, right? Mm. Yeah, we're having a, a moose moment. Moose girl has a breakdown with the dog. Yeah, Java. Uh yeah, well, we'll put those positive mental brain waves out there and you know Make the dog available for Moose to be returned back to the loving arms. Because dogs panic. Um, yeah, even Jack, Java Doctor, it's cold. He'll come back. But, of course, we all say that trying to be, you know, up in the beginning. <laughs> That's our job, to be optimistic and look at the bright side, even though we're not there to see it. You know, let's give a little support. That's, I guess that's what I was leaning to is, um, and I'm guilty of it too. We're just so fucking used to being cruel to each other that it's common. It, it doesn't mean anything to be a rude prick anymore. Everybody's a rude prick, so why not just be a rude prick too? And then I think about it. I've been a rude prick my whole life. I was a rude prick when it wasn't cool to be a rude prick. I was the only one that did it. I got the fucking whippings and the timeouts and the fucking, you know, from school. Thrown out of school for a suspensions timeout. <laughs> they'd send me home for three freaking days. I'd plan it. And sometimes they'd catch they'd catch on and uh, tolerate me. Go no, it ain't working. You're you're gonna take the test today. <laughs> and other times they get rid of me. And let me go home for three days. And um, and here I am, a grown man, still still laughing at the stupidity of you know my childhood in in the system and and how it was all for you know the state. They have nothing to do with me. They just wanted money from the state, and they did their requirements, but. Tell you a horrible story about school. I was um whatever fourth grade fourth grade yeah whatever fourth grade was. I guess it was nine, and uh, I went to a public school and we had this Japanese teacher, and her name was Miss Hagashi, and Miss Hagashi wore a skirt up to her eyeballs. And there's a whole room full of nine-year-old boys that hadn't seen a cha-cha yet, weren't interested in a cha-cha, could pretty much care less about her having her legs, you know, crossed over the desk. I remember it because I remember her doing it. But what I remember most of all beside all that was I was acting up in the class uh, at Christmas time. It was just before the Christmas break. And I don't know, she wanted me to do something, I wouldn't do it, so she put me in my desk outside of the school, outside of the classroom out in the cold. And I didn't bring a, a coat that day. The next day I couldn't, you know, I was ill, <laughs> I was home. So I was sick for the whole Christmas vacation with some cold or something, and I couldn't play and I couldn't go outside and all that kind of shit. But, according to my dad, I brought it on myself, shut up. You know, 
you don't want to suffer, listen to the do what these people tell you. Stop fighting them. Why do you always got to fight them? Why do you got to fight everybody? And I still fight everybody. And I think it was his fault because <laughs> he raised me to not not bow down to everyone. Do you know, do the right thing. Be your, be your own man and all that kind of crap. And then the fucking first time I was my own man, they whipped me for being my own man and punished me and put me out and this, that, and the other. So being your own man from the very beginning was... Ah, yep, Zach and the dog were in the porch. The door was open a bit. Oh, no, she's still talking about how he got out. Whoa. Mm. I think Miss Kate and Circle would understand what to do better um, about the dog. Yeah, sneaky, but why? Because dogs are crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, you can't, you can't have the door open. Well, now, fortunately for, for me... The front door opens inward here, and there's a staircase right next to it. So the dog, you got to open the door, and she's grown a bit, so she can't just get out. You got to let her out. And uh, I would assume that that door opened the other way. I mean, it sounds like it. Maybe not, because it was just a puppy dog, but I don't know. It took my mind off me for a minute thinking about that poor dog being, you know, a dog and doing what dogs do and being a dog I always liked that man they'd open the door and turn your back and boom I'd be gone and what I learned real young was you know if you double back the last place they look for you is where you started <laughs> it was so much fun you know because adults are so brilliant they know everything no, what they don't know is if they themselves didn't do it, then they have no idea what to do about it. Like uh, crying out loud, all this chitter chatter on the internet lately about um, LGBTQs and sex changed and all this crazy shit going on, right? But what they do is they show you a city with a population of, say, three or four million where there's going to be a group of people that fit that particular category. They're not using small towns, you know, with a population of 10,000 where five people fall into that group, where there there's not enough attention on it to even warrant noticing it. And people live different because of it. When you shove something in front of your face, you know, somebody else's face and force them to accept it, what happens? Yeah. Let's hope that the dog gets recovered. We haven't heard anything yet. There's still chitter-chattering about how sneaky he was to get out there. I'm going to take him to the dog park. Oh, I get, did he get back, yes or no, Moose? Okay, I, well, I'm trying to chat and read. So Jackson Brown was returned to his proper human. Hmm. Oh... Yeah, she's going to play driving the boy to school. That's good. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, we've been having so many disruptions with the hardware and the timing and the this, that, and the other. Didn't manage to put a dark table together. I had no idea I was going to actually do one. I thought it was going to not happen. And Cirque, with her magical thing, got these others... This other set of headphones, nothing would work on the computer I'm used to, and I wasn't prepared mentally to try the new one, and uh, uh, this this is my weakness, you know? but if you're going to have a weakness, it might as well be something like that, something trivial about changing a machine, you know. I don't have a problem with going 5,000 miles to another destination and see what the fuck life's going to bring. But I have a problem with changing machines I'm comfortable with. I wonder what that's. It's probably my lack of to uh, talent <clears throat> with the computer thing in the first place. You know, if it, was, uh, if it was something I was good with, naturally good with, I wouldn't snivel and stutter and I'd just be burning this computer crap up. But it doesn't work. Oh, uh, they're still, <clears throat> excuse me, they're still uh, having Jackson problems. Oh, uh, wow. Well, it's early. 
give it a little time. Give it a half hour. Maybe you'll get hungry and, and you know, think. Because dogs don't think much. They pretty much live on, you know, balance and reaction. And when his tummy hurts, because he hasn't eaten in 30 minutes, he might go, and it's freaking cold out here. He might go, hey, how did I get here? And follow his own scent back. Dogs like that are pretty smart, aren't they, Sirk? That they could, no, they're not. Uh oh, well, I'm being optimistic for a change, and it's just fallen into a big pile of more shit. Well, anyway, uh, I hate to think that your dog would would dump you like that and you know upset the apple cart, but probably be a good out out. You know, the ending will probably be better than what's happening now. You get your dog back, just I don't know, uh, do whatever's necessary to keep him. In control, I guess is the way to put it. Because I'm that wild dog, man. You open the door, and under the right circumstances, boom, I was out that fucking door. And I don't know why. To this day, I can't explain. I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have any plans on going anywhere. I'm just saying that I know from history that I don't, I don't fear it. I'm not abject to a move or a, a change. But when I get comfortable with physical things that I, I'm doing that I'm not real good with, then I get fussy. You know, I find one particular machine that I prefer over all the rest, and I stick with that. My learning handicap, I suppose. But Grimm has uh, successfully, to might I say, installed um, all the equipment all the technical electronic equipment and the programs onto the Linux machine. Now, all I got to do is just relearn the screen so I can operate it because uh, little changes, you know, from one way to another way just throw me completely off. And I don't think I'm ever going to just sit down with a computer and turn it on and be a super hacker like they tell you. I want to be a super hacker, but no. (laughs) Hold on, let me have a sip here. Hmm. Yeah, I I did that, Miss Kate. And and ultimately what it did was, I think, you know, being that free with life, when I found something that uh, I wanted to chase, then at least I knew how to chase it. I wasn't flabbergasted. You know, I was verbally confused. Why don't you just go there and meet her? Yeah. Uh, the, uh? <laughs> it was, I don't know. It's like holding a, holding a pen looking for your pen. It's that same split. You know, that split second where just chaotic in your head and you, you can't see the answer because it's too obvious. But then once you see it, there's no stopping you. You just go, well, now I know. I'm going to do it. Well, now I'm just a homebody. I like my little home and my little, you know, I guess family because Cert came with a whole group and they're multiplying. She had a a niece that had a baby and now she has another niece pregnant. So that's two more kids into the fold coming up. Huh? Cousins. I see cousins. I I don't know. I never remember little details like that, but I know them by you know by their face, and I always forget their names. So everybody's all, "Hey, the Americans hysterical," but uh, I don't know with or you know with or without other people, uh, survival's always just been survival. But I think it's more interesting with other people. I never really settled down. Um, I guess to look at it and, and and get a result. I was just busy doing shit, you know. No plans. I didn't have a plan in my life. I don't know for how many years. Fifty, about fifty. I probably had plans until I was old enough to know what a plan was, and then I just started randomly doing whatever the hell I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And what I found out was, boy, grown-ups got a lot of rules. You know, you can't this and you can't that. And I'm not even talking about dangerous shit. But uh, as I grew, my parents kind of adjusted. I'm leaving. I'll be back later. Turned, it started out, where are you going? When will you be back? Turned into bye. 
and uh sometimes coming back wasn't in the uh in the program i had a i had a thing about if they're going to do this i'm going to do that and if they did this then i left hmm that carries over to this day that's you know that's still the only you know you can only do things how you know how to do them and other people can tell me oh do it like this no do it like that and i'm one of those people that now nah, if i don't have hands on experience doing something teaching me new at, nah it doesn't work very well i suffer terribly because of stubbornness you know And I also believe that a person's level of stubbornness is directly con- it's directly connected to the the success that they've had being stubborn. You know, if you're stubborn and you get your butt kicked every freaking time, you're going to learn being stubborn don't work and you're going to comply because the ass kickings are they're never ending. Now, if you're stubborn and the ass kickings stop, <laughs> Or minimize, you know, they slow down to where it happens once every couple of years. Then it's it's the same thing, but at such a small scale that I would have assumed about myself that I would have bypassed it. But no, nah, there's still things in life that crawl up under my skin and, and irritate me. And I got to really get a grip on what the hell is going on with me that I, I let something irritate me. And I haven't figured it out. Well, when I do, and I will, I wonder if I'll talk about it on the radio. Because I've got a lot of ideas, and i got a lot of opinions. But I'm one of those few people that I don't believe I know anything because everything I've been taught was crap. And everything that I believe is fluid, and it and it changes, or it has a life to it, like uh, like Cirque. This is gone and gone. We're coming up on five five fucking years, and I don't. I feel one of two ways. Sometimes I feel like I just got here, and sometimes I feel like I wouldn't know anything besides what I have. I'm very comfortable in Denmark, and I'm very comfortable not speaking Danish. So me and Cirque took the conversation about the speaking Danish thing even a step further. And as a tribe, as these people seem to be, learning to speak their language, is it's notable. And, you know, it's cute. But you're never going to be a Dane. And some people are going to take that learning their language thing that seriously. Not everyone. You know, everybody's going to see it differently. But there's different groups. And being in the, eh, it's, it's too hard, I'm too old, it's a, it's a cheap, cheesy excuse, but it's good enough, it works. And besides, who knew I was going to ever live in Denmark in the first place? And on top of that, guess what? I can trust my interpreter. My interpreter does not tell me bullshit stories about what's being translated. The worst thing about translation is that in Danish, it's more specific. And in English, things are very general. And you have a lot more choices to work with in English. Danish, not so much. For specific, English, very loose. Mm. To, I don't know. So instead of trying to um, uh, fit in, I've accepted my, I'm the visitor. You know, I'm your guest and that still i mean if it's worked this long there's no reason for it not to continue i don't get any grief from anybody about it uh i just like bringing it up because we have where i'm from we have people in in the states that probably all learn how to speak espanol by now but when i was living there in california in the you know 1970s Speaking Spanish got you into a gang. <laughs> it wasn't popular. Oh, no, that's for the Mexican gang over there. Because they had the Mexican gang, the the warlords, and then they had the Jewish gang, the landlords. <laughs> no, they didn't. They had the warlords, the Mexicans. And if you didn't speak Espanol or whatever, you weren't joining. They wouldn't let you in. They wouldn't even associate with you.
And they had their little jackets and, you know, my dad took me aside one day because some of them kids that were uh, the younger brothers of the gang members were my friends from school. And they'd come over to my house to whatever we did when we were 9, 10, 11 years old. I don't even remember. And uh, my dad took me aside one day and said, you know, being in a gang, you don't want to do that. And he told me why in his, his explanation of it. And I went, whoa, okay, that's a good good thing to know. Thanks for telling me. And I never got involved in the gang. But I had association because of uh, school ties. But never went anywhere, you know. I was uh, I was lucky in that not wanting to join and not wanting to be a part of the bigger thing was what my old man actually instilled in me from as early as I can remember. He told me the pitfalls of, you know, yeah, but if they do it and you do it, well, what's going to happen to you? Well, what do you mean? Well, think about it. So I did. And he would just leave it that simple. What happens if? Because running away from home was one thing. We got over that. But if I'd have started running with these kids that were, you know, (laughs) they were doing drugs. I mean, I'm not talking about smoking pot. I mean, they're older brothers. They were doing drugs and they had weapons and they had, you know, they had reputations and people were afraid of them. And here I am running around with their little brothers. So by connection, you know, you're protected by the bigger kids because you're close to the younger ones. Well, breaking off from that wasn't, uh, it wasn't difficult for me, but there was no going back. Once it stopped, it was done. You know, people were unforgiving. You're either with us or you're against us. So I think what I learned from that so early was, hey, man, you know, whatever the group wants to do, it's going to get you in trouble. All right. Now, maybe that's not the truth of the thing completely, but it's likely because you're talking about breaking laws and being antisocial and this kind of crap. All right. Well, I turned out as an adult, according to society, because I refused to you know, play their paper games and do their income tax and whatever else they got. Uh, drivers like, oh, Christ, once I learned about that. And I was warned, oh, you're going to get pulled over and you're going to go to jail. And I said, so what? I don't care. Go to jail for what? Driving a car? Smoking a damn flower? Everything that I've done in my life was so criminal. Driving without a license. Smoking a plant. Wow. What a threat to society. And that's why whatever life's brought me, I've always had the the freedom to to do the things that I've done because just because society deemed it illegal and wrong never really had anything to do with what I was doing. That was just their explanation of what I was doing. Had no reality to it. You're not a, you're not um, guilty of anything until you do something. And if you call driving to your, you know, destination and back, uh, without a a permission slip from the state, a crime, wow, then you've had a really um, pampered-ass life, and you don't know shit about life, because driving without a license is... (laughs) I mean, it, it might be against the rules and all that, and it might be dangerous, but, see, might be... Everything's all about what could happen, and people don't think about what does happen. Hmm... Like the kid that got shot in the back. He wasn't shot in the back because of what he did. He was shot in the back because of what he was going to possibly do. Because we're all fed the future. You don't live in the moment. You live in, hey, go here and become that. and Spend 12 years in this building and you get this. And when you're 90, they're going to give you a retirement. You get a gold watch and all this crap. But when are you ever encouraged to be in the moment you're in. And then what do you do with the moment that you're in? <laughs> well, I would give uh, marijuana quite the slap on the back for keeping me in the moment because I have to, well, like when I do the radio and I have a few tokes, I have to think very specifically about things in the past. I have to think very specifically about things in the future. 
But I never say anything about what's happening right now because nobody gives a shit. <laughs> I'm drinking a cup of coffee, <laughs> talking on the radio. We all know that already. See, living in the moment is boring. You know? So they conditioned us with all these movies about fantasy and they threw a little reality into it. And then you watch the then you watch the movie and it and as you grow, these things start to become less uh, Less rare. You know, it's like being five years old, you wait forever for Christmas. And at 55 years old, you've seen so many Christmases. Christmas goes by in a blink, and then it's January 19th already. And But not when you're five, when you're 50, right? Because you've, you've seen it come and you've seen it go. There you have it. Experience. You know, whatever your personal experience is, it ain't mine. Assuming this is what we all do. We try to assume the other guy knows what we're talking about and how we mean this and how we mean... No, he doesn't. He knows what he's thinking. That's all I know. I know what I think. I don't know anything else. What I see, I wear glasses. I don't trust what I see. And then what I hear, you know, things are subject to change. You know, and... Hmm... There's very few things in life that have a, a an emotional foundation to them in my history, not yours. Maybe you guys have have all been fortunate. And you met the the love of your life in your twenties, and you've been married ever since. And or you're single, and you like being single, and you hate the other gender, and fuck them all, and all that kind of crap. I think whatever your comfort zone is, if you truly allow yourself opportunity to find it you'll find it but we're we're constrained by all these rules of oh don't do that it's dangerous you know because i took a chance with cirque i mean i told her when i met her i said good lord i was so glad you weren't some big black guy named steve punking me you know on the internet with some girlfriend you know and having a good laugh but the way the relationship was developing I, it was just kind of a crack at, at meeting her. I didn't really mean it, but just that little, you know, that little doorway of doubt. You, it, it's kind of like an insurance policy, so that if if you are misled and you find out at the end that you've been misled, you're not so disappointed if you leave a little bit of expectation for having your teeth kicked in, and then you don't get your teeth kicked in. Hey, guess what? It worked out. And being prepared for the worst is not a pessimistic attitude to me. It's the other half of the coin, you know. Because all my life they've told us all these stories. Oh, look at the money. Oh, you can be the president. Oh, fluoride's good for you. Global warming. Ah, come to a come to Americans. You can be anything you want in this country. No, you can't. <laughs> no, now they're trying to put walls up to keep you guys in. And you think it's to keep them out. No, 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 no. That's not what walls do. Look at any state prison, and you tell me that those walls are built up to keep you out. <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, let's go back to the chat for a minute and see how the dog thing is looking. Uh, I don't see anything on there. I'm scanning. Scan, scan, scan. No. Oh, wait. I might take Jackson to the dog park today, even if it's cold. I suppose he found his way home. I'll find out later. I can't read and talk at the same time. I'm just not qualified. And we got a good group today. Dort Cakes and Miss Kate. RLM Fluke Descent. Directing traffic. And we got a moose girl. Ooh. Good, good, good. Trust number one, Grimner. Ah, that's as far as I can read up without scrolling. Yeah, good thinking, Miss Moose. But you got the dog back and uh oh no the cold it will if he stays out in it long enough i was reminded of that old days with hannah the other night talking or the other day talking to you about jackson because when hannah was first a puppy it was uh winter time and i still remember to this day taking that dog out on a leash when she was a baby you know a couple months five six months old whatever it was four and uh, her being there, standing on that snow and, you know, 
doing her little business and didn't didn't bother her. She didn't shiver or shake. But, you know, if you don't leave them out there too, well, or I stay out with her when I do it. But if you don't leave them out there too long, they, they, they're built for it. You know, they, they have like a, an ability to survive it for a short period of time without any, any complications arising from it. But if you leave them out in it for too long, then just like us, their insides will freeze. And, uh, I've seen that people leave their uh, pets outside, the results of it. So, no, I would never do that to an animal. My dog, um, our dog is my dog. Our dog, because Cirque and Hannah have their own kind of thing, and me and Hannah have our own thing. So we split the dog. You know, the dog likes her for some reasons and me for another. And it's really bizarre to, to see how... Uh, Animals behave because of uh, attention and food. And I don't really think it's much different than us, but they're not capable of um, not showing you things. They just have to do whatever comes to their little brain or their reaction, and they do it. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. A human being can think things through and say, I'm not going to show you. You can think all you want, but I'm not going to show you any physical proof that you're right. <laughs> Gulpin' Coffee on the radio program. You're welcome, people. I bet you were living a whole lifetime to hear that. Anyway, I forgot what time I started, um, but it was late. Anybody got any? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll look at my table, my dork table podcast, and... uh. What time did I go on? Anybody know? Was it 8? I thought it was later because I'm all messed up. Anyway, then if it was 8, we got a few minutes left. And I'm going to uh, say goodnight to all you fine folks out there in the real world. And give you the uh, lineup for the coming week. And thanks for hanging in there tonight. I don't know, it's all emotional and, you know, all over the place about how I think and what I'm going, you know, what I'm, my mind is going through right now. Hmm. And uh, I got a good line off of Jerry. Jerry was saying about, you know, he's concerned about his uh, YouTube link being terminated because of certain language. And at the end of the link, he was saying, you know, and then when I think about it, fuck him. You know, maybe it's it's the best thing for me to get cut from there because this is not about large groups and audience. This is about a message for certain people that understand it to hear. And himself, you know, he wants to have a record. And he's more into the uh, research and he's got a much better memory. He knows where he puts his information and he knows how to categorize it. So when people ask him a question, he can tell them, look at this link on this certain day about that topic. Amazing. Now, to me, that's amazing. Maybe to other people. Oh, thank you, Miss Kate. That's what Cirque said, and I went along with the wife because when I don't, I'm usually wrong. You know, she doesn't give me too much crap. And uh, two hours is a long time and but when I'm talking sometimes it goes by really fast you know and then I think I've got all these things on my mind I don't know what to start with I don't know what to talk about so I just do stuff you know like the dog splitting on moose uh, I'm sure the dog didn't have any ill will it was just doing what a dog does and part of me is simple like that I just you know do what I do Hey, Dork Cakes, thanks a lot. And Mr. Rob Works is saying something to somebody. I hope it's not me. <laughs> it could be me and Rob. Me and Rob banter. And uh, anyway, I think I uh, I understand Rob better than I understand a lot of other people. So um, I can banter with him more uh, more openly, and I'm not personally, I don't take it personal. For whatever reason, Rob crack through that wall and other people not so much they say things to me that are that are uncolorful you know and i become me 
And I, I hear me talking and I go, whoa, I don't like that. <laughs> so we got some thinking to do in the Dork Table program to get onto it, you know, the next phase of my development, whatever's coming at me. It must be huge because I'm going through all these inner conflicts and turmoils. Got nothing to do with anybody else, but it sure looks that way at the moment. Uh, maybe we'll figure out a way to explain it. Maybe, maybe not. I, I have no clue what tomorrow is going to bring. I just got a direction I'm trying to go in. Okay, and with that, we've got tomorrow in the morning, Mr. Grimnert's going to come on to the RLM and do his blues channel. He plays music for about three hours or so, and uh, we play some um, trivia. Wow. And I'm telling you, these trivia people, on if you're competitive, get your butt over to the reallibertymedia.com chat and sit down and play trivia with us, because... Some of us are smart, Michael, smart. <laughs> and then after that, we got Hal Anthony coming on with the, Behind the Woodshed. And he'll throw his personal mm, touch, you know, the way he sees things. This is how you fight Mother State. And this is what you can expect if you follow these courses, you know. Follow this path to get to that place. And that's where that's where uh, I feel that... He's strong, you know, when it comes to dealing with the state. Now, Monday night, we got Grimner, and he's been batting around moving his show um, to a later time because it's interfering with his evening, 5 to 6 o'clock, whatever it is for him there. At that time, is isn't working for him, so he wants to back it up a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. I wasn't sure. I <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, but, yes, uh, that's Monday night. And then Tuesday night, I don't know if uh, – what to do about in a perfect world. That's up for grabs. If there are any changes to be made, let me know, Grimner. If you want to continue the way it is, uh, I'll do it solo. Then Wednesday and Friday, we got Grammy's Rocket Chair. That's what, 6 o'clock East Coast time or 7? I forgot. I think it's 6 o'clock. Yeah, 6 o'clock East Coast time. And uh, Thursday night, I do my midnight show. Where I, I don't know, I call it 20% off because <laughs> I have been accused of being at least 20% off for a lot of years. And I don't think so. If anything, I think I'm 80% off and the rest of you just don't get it. And then on Friday, after the Rocket Chair podcast with Miss, M Miss Mary, we got Grimner and Moose Girl. Or, as he puts it on the thing on RLO, Moose Girl and Grimner. I'm just used to saying, you know, I go alphabetically in GM. But <laughs> for those, you know, for those of you out there in in the balance world, anyway, I was having fun. And then hopefully next week I'll be back to the Dork Table podcast to give you guys something to think about. Or not, I don't know. We try. We do what we can do. You know, in uh, in the end, what the fuck? It, it's all for fun, right? And if you can't have fun, well, then don't do it. Over.